Hello everyone and welcome. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about a technological breakthrough and invention in battery technology that if it's real, will kill every internal combustion engine vehicle in the next 10 years. It's gonna be a fun one, it'll be real cheerful. Stay tuned. Now, I don't normally make technical episodes like this of any sort, but this stuff has literally blown my mind and completely changed the way that I'm looking at automotive uh, right now and in the future. So I gotta share it with you guys. It's interesting. Stay here with me. Before we jump into it, I wanna cover a couple BS for Build bases to keep you guys up to date. The BurntCon is being worked on as we speak. A lot of things went wrong after our few first few maiden voyages, and we got a lot of things that we need to fix, so we're gonna go over all that, and we're working on fixing them right now. I'll give you guys a boat update in this episode. By the end of this episode, we'll be on a boat. Hopefully mine, if it's still floating. And yeah, I guess that's it. That's the end of BS for Build updates. That's easy. So this new form of battery that we're gonna talk about today uh, will change everybody's lives around the globe. If it's real, which I'll get into later, I believe it is, uh, completely around the world, game changer uh, for, for humanity as we speak. It'll be one of the biggest technological breakthroughs uh, ever. And I'm gonna let you guys extrapolate and look into more of what that means for everything other than cars. I'm gonna stay focused on automobili. But it is cold in here and uh, quite dirty, and I don't need to be here, so let's pack up and head to the boat. Well, look at that. I'm still packed up from the last two weeks I was on the road. That, that, that's it. Just grab a little 12 pack of Truly for the boat. I'm good to go. Should we take the truck or it's not very discreet? The Lamborghini then. Much more subtle. Sorry, I've wanted to do that transition forever. So pretty much ever since Beast for Build has been able to afford it, I've been doing research every year, you know, between builds on whether or not this is the year that we build an electric car. Now this whole battery thing aside, uh, I do think like this is the year 2020 Beast for Build is going to build an electric car. And that's kind of how I stumbled upon all of this. And I still don't think it changes the game for electric hot rodding and anything like that. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But now is a really good time if you want to jump into the electric hot rodding game. And if this battery technology does come through, it'd be really smart for all of the tuning companies to start thinking this way. This isn't really the best spot to film, I don't think. Why is it that I remember car washes being like such a quieter experience? I must not pay attention to things very often. All right, Huracan is clean-ish. Let's get to the boat. Don't you just love when you get those easy parking spots? Car's right there. Dinner's right there, boat's right there. Made it to the boat. Boat update at the end. So I've never been completely sold on the electric car being the every people's car. I think that they're gonna be fun for hot rodding. I think they are right now with the technology they have right now. And I think they're good for people with like large bank accounts that do short commuting, but for the most part, reasons that they're not going to take over really is that the lithium mining process is not cheap enough it's too dirty of a process it's not green enough and it's not expandable enough to, to kind of fill the whole market and make them cheap enough to bring that cost down for people to want to deal with the fact that you can't just drive and then fill up your tank you have to recharge and the recharge time just brings the convenience down and i think it's that balance that makes tesla survive where it's at but not you know, take over the entire market. And that's why electric cars haven't taken over the entire market. Um, but I think Elon Musk is a bit of a alien, super genius alien. I think that he's actually so smart that he knew that technology would obviously continue to advance and all it would take is like one big step forward and then he would be in the right spot to kind of pounce on it and just take over everything, which I think what's probably gonna happen. So gas and diesel engines doing what they do and doing it really well and the way that the electric cars kind of came on scene and the, still the limitations of the lithium ion battery and the battery packs, I did not see any circumstance where the gas powered car was going anywhere probably in my lifetime to be honest. And then from left field comes in this huge advancement in technology, the solid state battery aka the glass battery. Huge game changer. So I'm gonna put a link below for the Wikipedia page for the glass battery and some of the other resources that I read. And if you're very uh, tech savvy, you might understand even more than I do, but I'm gonna give you guys some just real basics of how this thing works. It uses solid glass electrolytes. And I don't know exactly what all that means, but what it does mean is that there isn't a liquid part, especially a combustible liquid part, like what we have in traditional uh, lithium ion batteries. So it's really, really safe. It's also constructed of super earth friendly materials. So basically what they're saying is they can make this out of glass, a 
couple metals and sodium, and we can pull tons of sodium out of the ocean. So it's it's using uh, plentiful resources that the Earth has rather than trying to dig up all the lithium on the planet. And what researchers are saying is with it being built out of Earth plentiful resources, it's gonna make it a lot uh, safer to produce. It's gonna be uh, able to be mass produced a lot faster, and it's gonna be commercially viable a lot faster. And that helps bring the development time down from lithium ion taking 25 years to come on stage to be widely adopted to maybe this being five years. This also got started like two years ago. So the huge takeaway of the physical composition of this new battery type is not only are the resources to build it very, very plentiful and easy to get, but um, with it being a solid state, you can't have thermal runaway. And that's huge because thermal runaway can happen with lithium ion batteries when you charge or discharge them too fast. Um, and that's when you see, you know, cell phones exploding and all those other just terrible cases that you've seen on the news and stuff like that of bad things happening with lithium ion batteries. That wouldn't be possible to happen with these, in theory, from what I've been told. So that's enough right there to make this technology become easily adopted and take over all the lithium ion batteries, but that wouldn't be enough to really take over the whole automotive scene. But here are the stats about these batteries that will make that possible. The solid state glass battery compared to lithium ion batteries can store 2.2 to five times the amount of electricity inside it per little square inch. Now, when you sit down and think about that, that turns a Tesla that had a 500 mile range to being easily a 1000 mile range. So what that does is that makes, you know, driving from my place up here in Portland down to Los Angeles, a one charge type of deal. Just charge when you get to your location. It makes driving across the country two charges. What it really does is basically you can drive for about 20 something hours per charge. And what that's going to do is make your car last longer than your driver. In most cases, you're going to want to stop. You're going to want to go to sleep or something like that. So it's a huge, huge breakthrough in distance. The statistics on charging and discharging are a little bit fuzzy, but they're saying huge improvements over lithium ion. Basically what they said is it turns hours long charges into minutes. Now, I don't know exactly what that means because that could be a really rough figure, but we know it'll charge faster um, than a traditional lithium ion battery. And they're also very, very lightweight compared to, because in the lithium ion battery, you have these stainless steel barriers that are built into each one of the little cells and you don't need that anymore. And then all the other protection stuff and all that stuff that completely goes out of the window. So they're light weight they can store two to five times the amount of power which is just astronomical um, they can charge a lot lot faster so in my eyes that's exactly what it takes to kill the internal combustion engine market you have safety you have easily resourced you have charging faster you have tons more power storage per vehicle and lighter weight that's it that's the nail on the coffin for every internal combustion engine car basically so the huge question now is is this thing real is it going to be commercially viable and, and you know how are we going to be able to tell the sign so first off the guy that invented this is a super genius that has already changed our lives twice before so the guy's name is good enough which is hilarious because everything he's done has already been good enough and he could just die if he wanted to he's 97 uh, but thank god he's hanging in there for us um, so uh, early on in his career he was on the team of people that invented ram random access memory no matter what you are watching this video on utilizes ram and wouldn't work without it so that was a huge computer breakthrough that he uh, was a part of early early on in his life advanced computing insanely and uh, you know that's a huge deal right and then he went on to invent the lithium ion battery so the father of the lithium ion battery actually is the same dude that is saying that he's got the next big thing so what scientists are saying is yes if any other person came to me and said that they invented this we probably wouldn't believe him but when it's this guy a 97 year old he won the Nobel Peace Prize this year he's got a reputation that he has no point in ruining or tarnishing uh, and he's saying this is real this is how it works he's telling people and producing papers about how this stuff works um, and answering criticisms and critics uh, about technology breakthroughs and, and how it functions so it's I've actually read some of the answers and they all it makes sense to me I am a doctor so to be totally honest with you guys like do I think this is gonna happen and am I gonna kind of change my life in expectation of this stuff coming online uh, yes and kind of so yeah, I totally think this stuff is real and I think it's gonna happen. If I had to bet on it, I'd totally bet on it happening. Um, now, I think that there's a way to do a pretty safe bet, which is just to watch the markets, watch the technology industry, watch what Tesla starts promising for 2023, 2025, stuff like that. Like Tesla promising this Roadster right now that physically at, with the technology we have right now doesn't work. But if when they start you know, hammering down and promising these things to happen, well, they could happen with this new battery. So now it all starts to make sense, right? So we can watch those markets watch those things as they start to evolve and things start to spin up and then that will be a big signal at, to us the 
consumer if you know we should get ready for it or not. I don't own a gas station, so I don't think it's that big of a deal for me, really. If you want to think about what it means for stuff outside the automotive world, it's it's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. It means that you could potentially build flying electric uh, vehicles or aircraft. Um, it means that your cell phone, your laptop, all of that stuff, the battery in it will become so much more efficient, charge so much faster, and be safer. So that's pretty fun. Uh, it means that you could probably carry around like a personal battery pack, like half the size of a backpack that would charge like... You know, you could go camping and have a big screen TV on like the whole time off of one charge. All sorts of crazy stuff like that. It'll change, if it comes through, it'll change our lives 100% for sure. And kids that grow up after this will have no idea how much we suffered with only one charge per day. But let's jump back into what it means for cars. And I'm going to start with kind of the just general production of vehicles. Once this technology is announced, car manufacturers are going to stop research on gasoline engines. There's absolutely no point and no reason to continue looking into the technology behind that and trying to make uh, gas or diesel powered engines any better. There's just absolutely no point. So for general production cars, the companies that stay alive will be the ones that start research, you know, get these, get their hands on these battery packs quickly. They design chassis that are more universal around these battery packs um, and source good sources for electric motor, transmission, differential combos and stuff like that so they can stay alive in the new market. Like the gasoline engines, nobody will want to buy one moving forward and I think that that will be a very, very rapid changeover. I think energy is going to become a little bit more interestingly valuable, but I don't know how much energy compared to how much the grid uses right now it would take to power every single car on the road. But once you do that math, it, it could mean interesting things. I'm not really sure. Your general everyday car manufacturers are gonna need to make a huge pivot. Any of them that right now survive off of just building economical cars for everyday people to commute back and forth to work and take your kids to soccer and stuff like that, it's gonna be a huge change. They're gonna need to be looking a lot more at technology rather than powertrain engineering. Transmissions, engines, all that stuff kind of goes out the window because everybody will be able to very quickly be at a pretty base playing field where you can make a car that has 500 horsepower, 500 foot pounds of torque, that's all anybody really ever needs, and a great battery pack. That'll just be like a base. It'll be so easy to produce and mass produce that they need to be thinking about more technology that people are going to want because that's where people are going to be looking to buy cars. No more argument over is this car more reliable than this car or blah blah blah. I mean reliability is still a thing in electronics but it's a lot different. So think about the most technologically advanced cars right now which is where Tesla's already in the lead with their autopilot and all sorts of the other crazy gizmos that they have. You have like Mercedes has a lot of great creature comforts that they do with the, you know helping you not fall asleep and all that other stuff. Those types of things are going to be what they're going to be have to either cram into their cars and get to work really well all together or go out of business. If we want to think about what it means for current cars that are already made, that are already on the road, like my Huracan I just drove here today, that are already produced, it's going to be pretty interesting. So I think all your uh, economical cars that people just drive every day, they're going to, um, you know, they're going to die out and as people can afford to upgrade, they're just going to always upgrade to away from um, combustion engine cars. Now when you look at your collectible cars, um, older collectible cars are always collectible, but I think the range, like for instance, like what my Huracan is out there, that car is in really, really big trouble. Experts are estimating 10 years or less on this battery technology before it could be used in like commercial vehicle applications. So you take my Huracan out right there, that's a 2017, should easily be able to be used for the next 10 years, right? They might build a newer model, it looks cooler or something like that, but that's still a Lamborghini, right? That's still awesome. Well, not really, because if in seven years they put a uh, five, 600 horsepower electric motor in there and then these awesome electric battery packs, no one is ever gonna wanna jump back one or two generations. People might go buy a 70s or an 80s Lamborghini or a Ferrari or something like that that's more collectible and more classic, but that generation that's right before this big jump to electric is all just gonna go down the drain. So my green Lamborghini's for sale, if uh, anybody's interested. <laughs> but I think when you look back at all of the rare or classic cars, uh, those are still gonna hold their value because people will still want them and they'll, they'll enjoy the gas-powered engine, the feel, the sound, the smell, all that stuff. It'll still be awesome. It's just the mass-produced, uh, kind of expensive luxury, high-performance cars that I think are all just gonna plummet really fast. So what does this mean for tuning? What does this mean for people like BS for Build where we're just building and modifying these crazy sports cars? It's gonna be really interesting. I think that tuners are gonna need to focus a lot more on um, things like braking and suspension and aerodynamics and high-end technology where you're literally either writing code or working with people that are writing code to manage your battery discharge and your electric motors better or just with like higher tech. All-wheel drive and systems like that that can really, really grip up to the road and stuff like that are gonna become like so much, so much more important and just higher tech. 
I think at about the 1500 and over horsepower level, people will still be using gasoline powered cars for things like drag racing and other stuff like that. Because right now, um, I don't think there are a lot of commercially viable electric motors that can easily replace those things with the size given. But let me paint you guys a picture on how easy it would be to build an electric supercar that's insane. With technology that's out there right now and today, you can buy a Tesla rear drive unit that's about 700, you can clock it up a little bit more, 700 to 750 horsepower. So you could place one of those in the rear and you could place one of those in the front of a vehicle. The problem is, is with traditional lithium ion batteries, you jam pack that whole vehicle full of batteries, uh, it would be insane and it would weigh a ton. But once you're talking about batteries that could be five times smaller and even more lightweight with re like really fast charging and discharging, that's all you need. Two motors that already exist, a couple batteries that are coming in the future, you place all that in a car, you wire it up, and you have a 1500, relatively, basically a 1500 horsepower all-wheel drive monster, which, does that exist anywhere right now? But you could be doing this with like, those two drive units are right now $9,000 a piece. We're thinking 10 years into the future, those plus some batteries, it's just like, boom, game over. So what I'm saying is once the battery change is made, all the cars are gonna have the ability to just be fast as hell. It's all gonna come down to the suspension, um, the braking, the aerodynamics, the body shape of the car, uh, which brings up another really interesting idea is what is the body shape of cars going to look like now that you don't have a big ass engine in the front or a big ass engine in the back of a car. So if you're thinking about the shape of a car, you're gonna to wanna to think first about how to build the best handling car and see what that would then produce. So <laughs> this is kind of stupid, but okay. So you want, you want the lowest center of gravity as possible. So you want all your weight to be at the bottom. So you're gonna put your motors as low down as you can, and then you're gonna make the floor basically the batteries. That's what they already do over at Tesla right now. So we're gonna do that same thing. Now you want your front and your rear wheels to be as far out on the vehicle as possible, meaning you want the least amount of body on the outside of the wheel and then you need a place for a human being normally in the middle for crash reasons and we end up with a beetle we're all going to be driving beetles in the future 1500 horsepower beetles but now really when you think about it it's actually going to get pretty interesting because the shape of vehicles is going to be able to change radically um, but you probably will see a lot more of those bubble shaped cars they're already out there right now the autonomous driving cars and stuff look all look like hell but also your general purpose cars the reason people don't buy really big cars other than them being hard to park um, they don't buy as many big Suburbans and these other things is normally fuel efficiency and pollution and stuff like that. Well, once that all goes out the window and you can just rapidly charge this thing and get a bunch more use out of it, your general purpose cars will probably be a lot larger than they are right now. Probably as big as people want to get before it's a problem to park in places. Again, with the electric motors, you have so much torque on tap and so much power on tap. It's not a problem to be lugging around this 4,000 pound thing if you have a thousand foot pounds of torque and all the speed in the world. I think custom built sports cars based off of kind of the skateboard technology, battery pack, little basic suspension, couple wheels on it, which every company will probably generally produce like Tesla does right now. Um, it's gonna lend to a lot of really cool coach built cars coming back. I think coach built car companies are gonna come back from the dead. If you guys don't know what those used to be, they, they basically just would build these really beautiful one off unique bodies and interior cars over the chassis of another car manufacturer, normally with a small partnership between the two or something like that. I think we'll see stuff like that happening um, and it's gonna, it's gonna bring out a lot more unique looking cars that could fit people's personalities a little bit better. If you look even further into the 3D printing of car panels and car body part technology where like TJ Hunt just basically 3D printed a body kit, by the time that this battery stuff gets to where it needs to be, I can pretty much guarantee you that 3D printing is gonna get there too. So you could have this crazy situation where you can almost have a static interior and a static skateboard and you could just 3D print a different body for the car and slap it on there. I don't know how that would work with safety and stuff like that, but it's, it's not something that's too hard to figure out. If you wanna think about what this means for the world of racing, I think that people are always still going to build uh, internal combustion engine based cars and stuff like that. People still build old classic cars and race them. It, they're just in their own class, class of their own. People still race horses. Um, they just don't drive them to work every day. So I think it's all still gonna survive. It's all still gonna live. But I think at the top of the line racing where we have like, you have like Formula One and all these other things, I think that's gonna get really interesting. I don't, I, I was trying to think of what it would mean for NASCAR, like maybe NASCAR would die. I'm not really sure or it could just pivot. They would might have to really make a pivot and do their own thing. But, um, you know, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're forced to use limited engines as it is already. So they're not all just saying like, use the best technology. So maybe they'll just say, well, NASCAR has to stick with gasoline or maybe they'll change over at the same time and it'll be a 
true driver's based sport. I don't really know, but with electric motors, you can turn on and off torque to a wheel so fast that you can build some really, really insane traction control. And that will be a huge game changer for racing and for just everyday dummies like myself trying to fly around a corner really fast. The cars will be able to save you a lot, a lot more. So that's it guys. That's how this guy, John B. Goodenough at 97 is gonna change our lives forever in the automotive scene, or at least I hope so. Because although it'd be really sad to see the internal combustion engine die, I think it also means just such great things for us every day and for our planet and for health and technology and space exploration, and all sorts of other great stuff. I think it's worth it. We gotta, we gotta let it, we gotta let it go. But today's the day. Today's the day I actually found out that like gas powered engines are going to die. But also they're not gonna die because just like automatic transmissions, people like to do stuff that maybe takes a little bit more effort or something else like that, but feels so much better. It's better to run through those gears. It'll be better to have a gas powered engine. If you're a hot rodder, if you're a builder and you wanna just rip it down the street, it's gonna feel so much better to do that on gas. It might feel slower, but it'll feel and it'll sound and it'll smell better, right? So we'll still do it. All right, I promised to be us for boat update. So the boat is still floating. We are downstairs in the kitchen slash living room area of the boat. Bedroom's still here. Bathrooms looks great. Oh my God, there was lights on behind me the whole time. Switch is over here. Why did they do that? Anyways, yeah, this is one bedroom we can keep clean. So that's nice. And up top, our furniture has fared pretty well in the weather. It's, you know, changing color a little bit, but it's nothing too bad. Lamborghini table still lives. Everything's pretty chill out here. We got a better ice chest and fridge and everything, but it's, it's doing pretty good. I think dinner is calling my name right now. So it could certainly use a couple small updates. Wow, it's really dark out here on the front. My navigation light is on. We only got one navigation light here and the other one is like not being nice. It burnt out since the last time we we're out and the one up there did too. So I'm gonna upgrade all those to LED. I'm gonna get off of here. But right now, other than fixing small things like that, I don't have any huge episode worthy stuff. When it's time to use the boat, we just wanna go use the boat and be out on the water. This summer, when the temperature comes back up, you know, we may decide to do some larger mods than others, but we're not really sure yet. All right guys, well that's a wrap on how these new batteries are gonna change our entire lives, maybe. If you like this type of content, these deep dives into automotive technology, subscribe to my friend Engineering Explained, because I'm never doing this stuff again. See you guys soon when we get back to work on the Huracan. Peace! Come on.